Welcome to Thriving Rockstar with Alex Rakin. Today's guest is Steve Sobelsly. How are you, Steve? I'm doing well. How you doing, man? I'm doing great, man. How you been? What What are you guys up to these days? The, he's the uh, guitarist and uh, singer of Punchline here. So we are heading out on the road. We're leaving Thursday. Today's Monday, and we're leaving Thursday to go meet up with the Less Than Jake tour. We'll be out with them for three weeks. It's with Less Than Jake. And then also on the bill are Mess and Kali Massey. And really looking forward to it. We just released a, we announced that we're doing a, a, a EP of covers, which we've never done before. Mm-hmm. But the EP is called Songs from 94. And it's uh, four cover songs, all, all songs that came out in the year 1994 which 2019 is the 25th anniversary of. And 1994 was was the year that I really got into music. That was the year that Green Day Dookie came out and Weezer Blue Album, and they just blew my mind. And I've kind of been on this, been on this path ever since, ever since that year. Wow. Yeah, you guys formed back in the 90s, right? You guys have been around for like 21 years at this point or so. Yeah, so I feel like, so we started the band in high school, and it's basically the first band I've ever been in. Mm-hmm. And I feel like a lot of bands, other bands, at some point would have changed their name. But we just always liked our name, so we always kept it the same. But I mean, if you if you really dig, you're going to find stuff from, you know, 1997 that is, uh, you know, sometimes <laughs> so when people ask us, like, oh, I want to look you up on Google, I make sure to tell them, like, what albums to look up so that they don't go and find something from from back then because it's <laughs> you definitely get you can see you know the whole picture can be painted for you if you listen to all of our, our all of our albums you'll really see our our growth and and whatnot mm-hmm. yeah we were, we were hanging out this weekend we were playing through some of the song some of the songs from our first album yeah and talking about what songs still kind of hold up which ones don't and it was really fun yeah, it's crazy to see how much you mature over time if you've been writing for that long, you know? Yeah, I feel like we're starting to figure it out. That's cool. Yeah, we always do, right? And then uh, a few years later, we're like, what was I thinking? <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, I know. with our the, So we put out an album called Lion. It came out a year ago, mm-hmm. in, a year and two days ago of this moment. Wow. And... I feel like when I, I went back and listened to the album two days ago on its year anniversary, and I was thinking about this, and five years from now, I think I'm still going to be stoked on these songs and don't and won't feel like that. But I do feel like that about everything else. But I just feel like I'm not going to feel like that about this. God damn it. Yeah, well, you know, listen, <laughs> we've, we, we've released the best thing that we have when we have it, you know, and, and it's, you know, that's all we could do, right? It's not like we'll know what we want in five years or something like that. Totally. Yeah. And I mean, when I when I go back and judge songs, it's not just about the songwriting. It's not just about the lyrics. It's about also about the recording, the you know, the performance and whatnot. So there's a lot of factors that go into, you know, judging songs of the past and what i think was better about this album just was well-rounded you know there's so many songs that i do think man if we had nailed this on the recording it would be a 10 in Mm. my in my book but i feel like we're i feel like we're chipping away at it that's great that's great yeah so um so the kind of stuff i like to cover on this show um really kind of revolves around the health and business aspect of things so yeah um do you have any philosophies around diet? Oh, I, I sure do, ma'am. Mm. I, for years on tour, I, you know, I was younger in my 20s and uh, definitely took the clubs up on the free beers that they would give us mm. more than I do now. And I had a lot of really great times, but I felt like I was always tired on tour. So in recent years, you know, like I said, we kind of we took a break a couple years. I was living in Nashville and then I moved back and we've been back on the uh, the touring path again. And it, it's the first time that I've really been able to experiment with 
uh, different dieting practices on the road. Mm -hmm. But I'm so I don't eat bread and I don't eat sugar. Okay. And I make sure to get my vegetables and I take supplements and I absolutely try to hit the the hotel gym every morning Mm. when when we wake up as well as we uh our our band's hobby is to play hacky sack which (laughs) you know once we throw the hacky sack up if we have the time we'll we'll do it for an hour no without batting an eye and it's 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 a really good like supplementary workout as Mm -hmm. well as like playing is you know you get your get your heart rate up but man i i i just i've noticed on these last few tours that and i'm not no disregard to anyone else in my band but i'm the only one who has this kind of crazy diet and i'm also the only one who doesn't take naps during the day Mm. Um, and it's been great for just mental clarity and energy um i think that uh i don't think that not eating bread and sugar is for for everyone i i don't know if i have some kind of condition I definitely have an intolerance to to wheat. Mm. So, you know, I just get extremely fatigued from eating bread and sugar. So I've just cut it out and it's been it's been great for uh for the road. That's awesome. You know, um many people don't realize that a third of the population is somewhat intolerant at least to gluten. And um so you might have just a greater intolerance than others. Um, and, and keeping away from bread and sugar and stuff definitely helps to, well, helps from robbing your energy that that's for sure. Cause like, you know, that stuff digests quickly and then, and then it's out and then like your band members have to nap basically. (laughs) For sure. I'm also, I'm also big into the intermittent fasting. Wonderful. So I don't, I skip breakfast. Mm -hmm. I usually don't eat until after one or two. Okay. So you, you, mm -hmm. And then typically on the road, I'll try to eat before we play so that I don't have to eat anything after we play. Okay. Um, which can be tough. But oh. so, yeah, I try to eat all of my meals between 1 p.m. And, and 8 p.m. Yeah, great, great. So that's your window, basically. So you're, you're mm-hmm. um, is that your window on the road or back home or both? Yeah, it's, it's pretty much the same for both. Okay, okay. Um, that's interesting. Uh, so, so you basically, you don't have any post work, uh, sorry, rather post, uh, post show food generally. Generally. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, and you keep it low carb during the day. Yep. Very cool. Very cool. And how far before the show are you eating? Oh, so I have to eat two hours before or else i'll be you know i don't like to if you eat right before you play you know what it's like you'd be weighed down up there you don't want that no right so yeah that's it's timing it well because you don't want it too far behind it because then it's like you know you might be a little uh you know you might not have enough but then you know if, yeah if yeah it's uh, two hours seems like a good reasonable amount of time and obviously it's not a huge meal i take it yeah, typically I'm a I'm a big big salad guy. I try to get some uh some leafy greens every day. Mm-hmm. Try to get my beets. Try to get uh I'm big into ginger and garlic. Mm. Um, and then I take a bunch of supplements, you know, vitamins and whatnot too. Right, and uh, what B12. supplements? Okay, I take B12, D3, uh, turmeric. I've been taking resveratrol. Oh, cool! And sometimes magnesium mm-hmm. before before bed. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know, which actually mm-hmm. Patricia told me told me about, and I had magnesium, but I hadn't really been taking it. And over the last two weeks, I noticed that the one night I didn't take it, I w- I woke up a couple times in the night, which is which is rare for me. Wow. Yeah. It, is that magnesium influence coming yes. from you? Um, actually, yeah, <laughs> I think it is coming from me. For those listening, <laughs> I had a uh, Patricia's my roommate. Um, yeah, yeah. I uh, she she's seen me take all kinds of things, and uh, you know, I'm very much a kind of a, a biohacker, <laughs> always taking something and uh, experimenting. I'm uh, currently 
it's going to come off wrong experimenting with mushrooms not, not the psychedelic kind but the <laughs> oh nice <laughs> like the you know the cordyceps basically uh, yeah um lion's mane and uh chaga and uh what's that brand um uh four sigmatic actually yeah four sigmatic um that was recommended by uh tim ferris's podcast he's always talking about that oh nice yeah yeah so that um uh, that's a great thing it's cool that you take resveratrol uh, a lot of people think that they need to drink wine for that, and um, you you just it's way better to just supplement with it because then you don't get the effects of the alcohol, along with the uh, benefits of resveratrol. So. Oh yeah, uh, I, I mean I, I drink so little anymore mm -hmm. to to stay within the uh, the confines of my diet, and I drank the other night mm -hmm. for I. You know, I, I usually keep it to if I'm going to drink, I'll have max two drinks. Right. The, the other night I had four mm. and uh, yesterday was just a complete waste of a day. And <laughs> it was fun. Saturday night was fun. But just the. It's funny. Uh, uh, I rarely drink. I mean, like I, I, I also had drinks. uh kind of, I think it was on Thursday night, a friend's uh, birthday party. And I haven't I the last drinks that I've had were at the nam show so that's how yeah. that's how often i drink like it's two months ago <laughs> so yeah fr friday night was my first beer of the year there you go the, the yeah yeah show. and the only reason i had drinks at the nam show is because it was weird to be at the bar with like john petrucci and all these guys and not yeah have something in my hands i guess you know so yeah there's definitely mm -hmm. definitely a social pressure for mm. it. it's, it's, it's funny yeah and 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 being because i i also eat keto and uh it's uh i hardly have any carbs and then when you have no carbs in your system and you take an alcohol it's like it just goes right to the head yeah yeah for those sure does. you know one thing i regret not doing i should have thought about this i didn't realize i'd be drinking i would uh take some electrolytes prior so oh, nice. yeah yeah so then i don't i don't end up with like a hangover nice man um i uh i've been doing the cold showers lately that's kind of been the newest thing that i've introduced mm -hmm. into my my biohacking program cool which i didn't really know to, to call it that i guess i've heard that term but mm -hmm. after hearing you say it i realized yeah that's i i think I think I'm into that too. Sure. Yeah. But uh, cold showers are great, man. How long have you been doing that? I've just that? been doing, you know, 30 seconds. I'm trying to build it up just at the end of my showers. It's exactly what and I do. I've had, uh, you know, I've experimented with it in the past and it's one of those things where, you know, so I'm doing it again these, this, these past two weeks. Absolutely. You can feel it. It just stays with you all day long. It's crazy. Mm-hmm. And the, on, honestly, the, I've done the, uh, I tried the cryotherapy once mm -hmm. and the benefit from the, you know, as far as just the perceived feeling of it, it's the same exact feeling from the cold showers. It's not yeah. like it was greater from doing the cryo. I mean, it was neat to do it, mm -hmm. yeah. but I think the cold showers get it done. Yeah. And, and you don't pay for a cold shower. So it's like, <laughs> Yeah, it's not ninety dollars for two minutes. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Yeah, um, yeah. With, with with the, I do exactly the same thing. Um, I'll um, just finish cold because it's kind of hard to wash off soap with hot water. Uh, sorry, with cold mm -hmm. water. Um, and so, yeah, that that that's a good thing to do. I, and um, you know, I follow Wim Hof, which is like, the, oh, yeah, man. yeah. So, oh. <laughs> me and my girlfriend have done the uh, Wim Hof method. A uh, good amount, although she, you know, I still have to get oh, her yeah. into the uh, cold exposure because she's Thai and she just can't handle cold that well. <laughs> Man, there was this one time I was in, I was visiting Brooklyn maybe a year ago, mm -hmm. and I was so tired, and I told myself, "Go, go do a couple rounds of that of that breathing." And I did it, man. And I went to dinner right after that. And I was just giggling to myself the whole time of how 
I had made the tired feeling completely go away like I've never seen before, you know? Yeah. I can't even tell you how many times in my life on the road or just at home, I'm super tired and just want that feeling to go away. But you have, you know, things in life to do, work and, you know, and whatnot. Right. And goddamn that shit works. It it really does work. It's it's pretty amazing what it does. Um, for for those listening, that we're, we're talking about Wim Hof W, I M H O F. That's his name. Um, also known as the Ice Man. This guy has a the world record of staying in an ice bath for like or like an ice box basically for two hours straight, and maintaining his body's core temperature, fighting off infections like with his mind. And then training other people to do that, which is quite remarkable. Yes. Yeah. So, like, I, I'm very, um, yeah. That it, it, it's affected me a lot. You know, trying to uh, it, in my whole self development routine, it's become like a standard practice. Do, yeah. Do just, you do it every day? Um, I don't do the breathing thing currently every day. Um, I, I, I want to, but I, you know, at least I meditate every day. And we'll, you know, we'll get on to that kind of stuff as well. Uh, do you meditate? Not, not at the moment. Mm-hmm. And I've, ex- I've experimented with it over the last couple of years. Not, I mean, in the, uh, so there have been, been times where, you know, for two weeks tops, I would have a little 10, 15 minute regimen every day. Mm-hmm. But it's not something that, you know, when I look back on things that I've tried, I think the cold hours did far, for, far more for me than, than the meditation. Mm. And I feel like the meditation comes as a result of me. Like if I'm really taking care of myself, the, the better care I take of myself, the more likely I am to meditate. Mm-hmm. So it's like the meditating brings up about more self-improvement up, it's more like more self improvement gets me to a point where I have the time to meditate. Sure. Um, I've done the guided meditate, you know, some guided meditations through through the apps with Space. That the one, one of them. Mm-hmm. Headspace. Mm-hmm. I've I have wanted to try. I've been hearing about Sam Harris's. Oh app. yeah, yeah. It's I, I've actually mentioned it on another episode. Um, it definitely. Uh, I would try that one. Um. Yeah, just because so many people have recommended it, I yeah personally, you know, I just kind of do a vipassana thing. Um, do you know what that is? No. So vipassana is a um, they offer ten day courses for free actually, and um, ten day retreats where it's a silent retreat. Um, you're at this place, you, no technology, you're just meditating ten hours a day like a monk. And so you end up meditating a hundred hours in ten days, which is insane. Uh, <laughs> I'm sorry, you did this? Yes. <laughs> Tell me about it. <laughs> okay, so it it was quite an amazing experience. Um, I went to Shelburne Falls, I think it's called. Uh, that's uh, up um, north in uh, above Boston. It's like northern Massachusetts, I believe. And uh, it was pretty insane. I went there. We had like, you know, just kind of a lecture in the first evening after dinner where we kind of spoke to people, you know, uh, in Mm -hmm. a kind of cafeteria type of setting. Then after we uh, we had this, um, I forgot what they call it, this discourse, basically the day zero discourse. Then um, we took a vow of silence did our first meditation and uh, and then went to bed and then the next day we uh, we started you know this this journey basically you'd wake up at 4 a.m you'd meditate from 4 30 to 6 30 a.m and then have breakfast and this is all in silence imagine sitting in a cafeteria where there's like no one no one speaking while you hear just clanking of bowls and, and spoons and you know um and then you you go back to meditating and for another few hours and you have lunch and then you're meditating another few hours and 
Uh, there's group meditations, solo meditations, and then every night there's a discourse uh, where you sit and you listen to uh, this teacher, um, S.N. Guenka, which was the, um, the, per the person who basically brought this to the West and to the rest of the world. Um, it's a Burmese tradition. It's been around since Buddhist time. He started back in 2,500 years ago. <laughs> and and it's wow. and it's yeah it's been consistent since since then and now it's spread all over the world it's always free it's donation based and you they don't let you donate until you've done the course so um it's very cool and um uh, what i got out of it i almost left a few times because it was just you know my mind was playing all kinds of tricks on me but the technique is such where it's very much you know, there's no weird woo woo kind of stuff. It's like you just you're straight up just sitting there observing your body and they give mm -hmm. you a, a technique on doing that. And you go deeper and deeper and deeper until you basically feel yourself like you feel like your atoms vibrating. Like that's the best way I, I, I can put it. You know, I, 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 well, I, I don't know if I've achieved what you've achieved. I probably haven't because I have not put in the time to that level. I was going to note that uh, hot yoga is where I've seen achieved anything the closest to some, some state like that. Mm -hmm. And it, it definitely feels, it definitely feels great. I feel like lifelong and I will get, get to there. Sure. I don't know if I would sign up. I mean, that sound it sounds fun. I mean, yeah. tell, what was it like in hour five of your first 10 it. Well, it, I mean, it's not 10 straight hours. It's never more than, say, one or two hours at a time. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Because um, that would be pretty painful to sit for that long. <laughs> um, but it was, you know, I was distracted. I had back pain. I had, you know, it, it was it was not very comfortable. Um, but it was just constantly bringing the mind back and focusing on the technique. Um and the first three days you do uh, anapana, which is just to kind of get your mind more and more sharp. And then in... What uh, is that? Um, anapana is basically focusing on your breath in just a small triangle uh, from your upper lip to your nose, through your you know, nostrils Neat. and upper lip. And you, you, your mind is just there straight for three days. And uh, after that point, it's literally just... Um, what's it called? Yeah, it, it it's just that. Uh, after that point, then you start focusing on more of your body because you you you're able to go deeper. So the point of that kind of focus on that tiny little area, which even gets smaller over those three days, they tell you to focus just on this tiny little area, just under your 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 nostrils, and then you can feel the subtlest little sensations, like you know when you feel like little itches. Those are big sensations. Mm -hmm. The smaller sensations are just this constant feeling of like vibrating, like little tiny, tiny points, uh, tiny sensations that arise and disappear in fractions of a second, you know, like those kinds of sensations. Yeah. So you start to get more and more sensitive to them. And you also, I mean, the whole point of the technique is to realize that when emotional, when emotions arise, you know, you have a thought and that thought is loaded you know with like some kind of emotional response and then that emotional response manifests on your body as an actual physical sensation and you don't realize how much that's actually a thing all of the sensations on your body are manifestations of states of mind and so once you you've correlated that then if you don't if you react to the physical sensations with like you know something where you're not uh you don't want them to be there for example right like you have a pain or an itch and you want to scratch it or you want it to go away well that's being reactive to it so uh, after a period of time you're, you're supposed to um observe it objectively and not be reactive to it and then uh it it loses power from that right and mm -hmm. and so i mean i had sitting pains and all of this stuff that that was the thing that kind of like drove me uh to be uncomfortable and to react in a way but by day seven 
um, I had this kind of uh, transcendent <laughs> type of experience, which was like, you know, a big thing for me when I was there, where I had a pain build up in my back in this one particular sitting. And finally, I didn't react to it. I didn't want it to go away. I just observed it like, oh, that's interesting. And it, and it grew. And I just observed it like a ball of like, sensation just growing and I just kind of observed it oh it's interesting you know it just and, and it grew and grew until it just kind of like um kind of went numb and dissipated and I had no pain from then on in that sitting and that was like maybe 20 30 minutes in I sat for two hours straight without a, without budging wow and by I felt so great at the end of that two hours I felt like the, it's a, that was like my best sitting ever I got up and it was like a foot of snow outside. I, I was just, I wanted to test my strength of mind. I was in slippers. I took off my slippers by the door. I stepped out into the snow barefoot. And I felt the sensation. I had no reaction to it. I didn't shiver or anything. Wow. Yeah. And I was like, wow, this is amazing. Right. And the, <laughs> the, the, <laughs> so the whole idea. And from then on, it was just like very great meditation um, those last few days. Uh, but it was a big struggle to that point. Um, but, when when mm -hmm. I was in college, yeah. one year I was a sophomore in college and I was going to school in, in Pittsburgh where I live. And I remember one one New Year's. I, I, someone asked me what my new year's resolution was and I just blurted out, I'm going to, I'm going to ignore the cold this winter. Mm. And I didn't have any, any thoughts about meditation or any reason that wasn't any reason of it. I just hated, hated the cold. And I feel, I really focused on it that winter and you know, it, it all makes sense now having conversations like this and learning about meditation mm -hmm. and, you know, how your, how your beliefs and goals can reinforce your actions throughout your day. Oh yeah. And, uh, I was really surprised that, that was there. I was like, wow, this actually kind of worked just kind of trying to push it out of your mind in a, in a, in a calm type of way. But man, that's your, your story about your stories about meditation. They're, they're inspiring. Yeah. Maybe I got to work, <laughs> work it in. I mean, but do you see the practical aspect in, in life to that? Cause it's like when, if you're able to witness something like that within your body and not react to it the whole idea is that when things occur in life that we have no control over circumstances um external circumstances then we could be objective and you know have good judgment in that time and not be reactive and that's the whole thing after a few weeks of consistent meditation that's what i find as my main um takeaway is like I'm able to have like almost like a dialogue box pop up whenever something occurs and not be like snappy and reactive yeah. to it and just be basically be able to choose a response um you know to get me to where I want to be in that interaction that's awesome man yeah I, I compartmentalize my my brain into you know two parts is the uh the observant observing mind and then action taking mind and it's pretty it's it's pretty easy to i to keep that it keep that in mind but i mean i definitely see the benefits that meditation could have for calming my insane mind chatter mm -hmm. but i also think that to some degree i like my i enjoy my mind chatter it keeps me excited and, and whatnot <laughs> You know, like as oh, long I as gotta, you're not a victim of it, that's that's the main I want to sit down and, you know, I got an idea for this verse. Oh, I got to email so and so back. Oh, I got to do this. And I'm just like a crazy man over here. Sure. I, I could I, also just, you know, drink five less cups of coffee a day. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, I mean, if if you like to function in that way, that that's awesome. For me, I just feel like that it's like, um, as long as I'm in control of my mind, you know, that my mind does this crazy thing, good, I'll, I'll go on the roller coaster, mm -hmm. as long as it doesn't lead me somewhere I don't want it to. It's fine, you know? Yeah. So I try yeah. to break mine up with, um, you know, do do things where I get into a, a flow state, which for me, would be um, 
sitting down and getting in like songwriting mode mm-hmm. or opening up a recording session in, and zoning out on that for a while or reading or playing. I love to play ping pong. Mm. And so playing ping pong is a big one for me. Um, but I feel like if I can do, you know, ev- every day I get into some kind of zone where my mind is focused on this one thing uh, that is, you know, because if I'm sitting here, I'm sitting at my computer right now. Mm-hmm. And so I'm going to, I'm sure when we get off the phone, we we'll are be like, oh, I need to email so-and-so. Oh, I need to pull up this notepad and do this thing. Oh, I need to open up Photoshop and do this thing. That that seems to drive me crazy. And I can only stay in that uh, that plane for so long. Mm-hmm. So I try to break it up with, you know, different, flow state type things interesting okay okay um so as far as like the way you manage your time um you do you kind of like oh how do you do it um i go to sleep pretty early mm-hmm. I, i've been going to sleep at typically 11 and i get up at 6 or six thirty, and get my coffee and go straight to the gym Mm -hmm. and oh yeah we didn't talk about we didn't talk about that side oh yeah no we'll we'll get into that we can get into that now go ahead yeah so i'll try to go to the gym and knock that out first thing and then i come home and i love to get on the computer and do do any email stuff before uh anyone might call me on the phone Mm. try to sneak those those kind of tasks in before everyone's waking up got it and then uh i typically just will have a little running list of like these are the two or three things i have to accomplish today and these are the smaller tasks that i should also try to work in but prioritize Mm -hmm. the tasks and i typically have some kind of music activity a couple days a week whether band practice or recording session or phone calls about future sessions or something Mm -hmm. and that's yeah that that, that's how i do it always try to get in working out eat right get in some kind of musical accomplishment and you also try to i'm pretty bad at uh relaxing (laughs) i mean i relax i certainly relax bad i'm trying to get better at making plans with friends to do things and not isolate myself in that sense but because because i don't drink so much i definitely cut myself off from many regular activities that other folks take part in even though i can comfortably like go to a bar and not drink and hang out with people but it's just not on my radar to set that up right Right, right, right. Yeah. And, and um, it sounds like, you know, you spend a lot of time being productive with music and stuff like that. So it's like you just don't get to hang out as much, right? That's right. Yeah. Well, that yeah, that makes sense. As far as when, when you're working out, let's kind of go into a little bit more detail on that. Uh, do you have a particular routine or what, what kind of training do you do? I do 20 minutes on the treadmill and... I'll either run on the treadmill or I'll run outside. Mm-hmm. And then I've been lifting and trying to do, <clears throat> do squats, bench, and deadlifts. And those are like my three main things and, and running. So mm-hmm. those are my four main things. Mm-hmm. And then I'll supplement it, you know, with shoulders and other you know, sure. five tries and whatnot, but I really try to do and focus on getting my weight up for benching, squatting, mm. deadlifting. That's the main things, yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, good. That's that's good. I'm I'm not super into it. It's just something that I feel like I should be doing. So I've been trying to focus on it, and I talked to a couple friends about it. They they give me tips and right. whatnot. Well, but uh, mm-hmm. I'm also trying to to gain weight and eat a lot more. I lost a lot of weight last year without really trying so hard i just i really committed to my diet and i lived i was living by a park so i would be in the park all the time like if i was on a phone call i would be hiking Mm. and i would run and one thing i noticed because i've been 
you know, kind of doing this no bread and sugar thing for years and, and always working out to some degree. And then last year without really trying, I dropped like 20 pounds. And I, wow. I believe that it was the trail that I was running on ended with a giant hill. Mm. And I think that it was the hill that in the end was the thing that made me drop the weight. Yeah. It's, it's high intensity. Um, yeah. Um, yeah. So that, that's, that's interesting. Yeah. It just uh, kind of dropped off just from lifestyle, right? Yeah. Mm. It's crazy how much For your years environment. I was trying, mm -hmm. Oh man, I was not starving myself, but counting calories. And I just remember so many nights going to bed hungry and you know what I'm with what I'm doing now. I, I never really feel feel intense hunger. Mm -hmm. It's nice. Yeah, no, I eat. I eat, kind of eat as much as I want. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it, it's um, and the, the, when you uh, a few years ago, like you still had the sugar and stuff in your diet. I wasn't. I I, I would have more slip ups for mm -hmm. sure. Right. Right, right, but right. Now I'm, I'm much more dedicated to it. I mean, it's just it's my life, my lifestyle. So when you um, and, and this is a good recurring thing. Um, it it sounds like you're 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 unsure that you're doing uh your training well, but I would say that you know if you're basing your training on mainly doing deadlift, squats, and bench, and getting your weight up for those, I feel like that's a very good place to be. Good. Uh, yeah, Thank you. because like those are the main lifts. Those are the biggest compound lifts that use the most amount of your body, um, and and the the things that have the the biggest effect on change in your body, essentially. Uh, the deadlift just if you did one exercise, literally just one exercise. If you only deadlifted, that'd be that you know that that could be sufficient in some circumstances. Uh, wow. But, yeah. Uh, but deadlift, squat, and bench is is pretty great. And then auxiliary, you know, doing um, you know, military press, um, and then of course, you know, just hitting auxiliary muscles, triceps, biceps, and things like that. Very good, very good thing to do. Um, but if if one doesn't have time, I think you know, just doing those three main lifts, it's great. You know, and like you like nice. you said, like just the progressive overload of, you know, like going up in weight a little bit each time. So, yeah, that's that's, that, that, that you know, that's on point. There you go. Good. And you're trying to put on weight, you said. Um, so are, are you going about that in any kind of way or uh, just eating a lot? My. Mm -hmm. My buddy makes fun of me. He says that I eat more than anyone he's ever seen. Doesn't understand how I'm so skinny. Mm. And, but it's only been a couple of weeks that I've really ramped up eating. So I haven't haven't weighed myself, but I've hit. I've been uh, the last thirty days. I think I only had maybe one or two days where I didn't do something mm -hmm. for for uh, to check that exercise or lifting box and i can feel like i i can tell when i look when i look in the mirror and i'm really i really want to stick with it for for three months and i'm feeling pretty good about that but going on tour makes it tough but yeah. really there there are a lot of days where i can get to the hotel gym and we try to stay places that have a gym and i've literally never in the last in the last year I probably hit the hotel gym like I don't know a good thirty or forty times on tour, and have yet to see another person in the hotel gym. That's funny. So like, it's it is nice and uh, you know just get me there knowing that there's you know not going to be anybody there. It's basically going to be a private private gym. Yeah, yeah, I I know the feeling. I know the feel. <laughs> but you know what I miss on tour that is not easy. What was that? Finding a dry sauna yeah 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 I know, I know you want to talk about it yeah saunas are great man saunas um i used to jump in the sauna for like um 30 minutes post-workout because apparently you get a huge bump in growth hormone from uh from doing that oh man yeah that's what i want yeah yeah you do 
<laughs> so, that, so that's definitely my old gym. Yeah. My old gym had one, mm-hmm. and now where I'm living, there's not there's not a good sauna option. But my goal is, I really, I really just want to buy a sauna. Yeah. So. Yeah, that's a great thing to have. That's a great thing to have. That and you know. Do you want to do our next podcast from inside a dry sauna? Let's do it. <laughs> All right, sign me up. And you're over in uh, in PA, right? Yeah, uh, I'm, I'm in New York enough. Okay, yeah, <laughs> we could do that. <laughs> we're actually we're playing on this tour. We're playing two nights in New York on on a boat. Let's, let's really? see what that's called. Really, yeah. that's awesome. I'm gonna look it up and see what it's called. Sure. Is that within April? Yes. Ah, uh, so much cool things are happening in April that I'm missing because I'm gonna oh, be no. I'm gonna be in Thailand. Oh wow! Yeah. So. <laughs> yeah, April thirteenth and fourteenth on the Liberty Bell rocks off concert cruise with Less Than Jake and Mast. Wow. Yeah. That's uh, so. It's I think this uh, this episode will uh, likely air on the eleventh of april oh, so, nice. so yeah there you go it'll just be uh days before that very cool man yeah would you like to play one of our songs on the on the podcast um sure maybe we can you know like throw throw a piece of something in um yeah yeah maybe perhaps like you know throw like a little clip of something in but but you know, it'll definitely be in the show notes of the episode cool yeah um so uh just shifting gears a little bit um you know we we, uh i'm I'm just curious beyond um you know the the stuff we spoke about uh, as far as mental uh, mental practices and things like that you said you read What, what are you reading um i just read jordan peterson's 12 rules for life Mm -hmm. and uh recently read um vonnegut's breakfast of champions Mm-hmm. so what's your take on uh 12 rules oh i'm a big jordan peterson fan yeah likewise i think, um, <laughs> think every every couple years there's uh you know someone someone you hear about or find out about that gives you one of these epiphanies or shifts in the way of thinking that really really will give you steam you know uh give you the steam to push forward in your life and by changing your your thinking and Wim Hof was probably the guy before Mm -hmm. Jordan Peterson right and I feel like he's very controversial which oh yeah I I suppose I understand on one hand on the other hand I think if anybody listened to what the guy had to say that they would wouldn't think that right but if someone's seen the amount of content of his that i consume they would think i'm just some kind of like cult uh follower or something yeah uh, <laughs> he just has a lot of good things to say and i've i i listened to his book seven times <laughs> <laughs> so I get it. so I get it. yeah yeah that yeah, that goes on record here i am a huge fan and that's one thing that i'm missing he's coming to new york in during during that time but oh, no. but that sold out so fast yeah like he's selling out three thousand seat um arenas you know yeah like it's crazy it's it, so mm-hmm. what you know what i what i love about him mm-hmm. that other people in my orbit aren't doing granted he's you know i'm whatever i love that he explains in a an approach and a framework to how life works and how to develop a good life for yourself in a you know short easy way to to process Mm -hmm. and i just don't i will there were other people out there that were providing such a simple way to improve yourself it but it I, i don't know it doesn't yeah, I have friends who are like, "Oh, you love you love self help books," but I just, you know, the, the framework he provides for how to how to live a good life it, it's it's so simple and easy to get your head around that mm-hmm. 
I, I, I love it. It really, really resonates with me. Yeah, likewise. Um, what what aspect of it, uh, of, of what he speaks about, had the most impact on you? That everything in life is in its own hierarchy. Mm -hmm. And using using that to process what is happening to me is so so valuable mm -hmm. it helped me see you know thinking just in terms of of our of our band thinking about it you know it's easy to be in a band and say like i don't want to i don't want to play that game you know mm. i don't want to i don't want to compete with these other bands to, you know i like these other bands i don't want to compete with them and what i've deduced from from all of this thinking is that you don't have to play you don't have to play that game but you have to play another game instead if you want to you know make you know find success for your band or mm -hmm. for, your, for your art right and so i i don't think i used to understand that you know i wanted to say like well i don't want to play that game we're going to do things our own way but then wouldn't go about developing our own way you know mm -hmm. yeah yeah i yeah, know um a big thing with it was talking about like um speaking ac accurately and just uh, being careful with your speech um and being authentic at the end of the day you know definitely that's you know that had a huge impact on me, and and even in in this launching the show, you know, it, it definitely had a place in there. So that's awesome, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm I'm a big fan. Very influenced. Um. So, and besides that, um, what you know, what personal philosophies do you go by that kind of like help orient you in the world? Be kind. Mm -hmm. work hard um follow the meaning mm. follow the things that give you meaning which for me is uh writing songs gives me so so much meaning and it helps reinforce what i do in my career right 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 so do you um and mental health is a big topic in music recently and it's unfortunate our recent losses um in this past uh, few years and uh so i always ask artists you know how they're how they deal with very stressful situations or depression and things like that yeah so uh i've i've been been going through a bit of a hard time in, in my life mm -hmm. that I would prefer not to get into at the moment, but we will in the dry sauna follow up episode. Okay. Sure. But through this through this tough time, I'm I'm very happy to have developed these habits for taking care of myself. Mm. And what I'm noticing is that and I don't know if this is because I'm in, in tune with, with my body and paying attention paying attention to it. But the amount of sadness and unnecessary grief that I can mitigate by maintaining healthy habits mm -hmm. is uh, monumental, really. Right. right. I see direct correlations between, oh, I slipped up yesterday and now today I'm more I'm more stressed about about this. And just, you know, and really going through a tough time if i take care of myself it really helps me it really helps me perceive what i'm actually how sad i actually am <laughs> because right. so let's say i go off the wagon and i i eat bad i don't work out i don't get good sleep you better believe i'm going to be more stressed and upset over you know any any problems that i that i have right but if i if I'm on top of my game and I'm working out and I'm eating right and I'm and I, and then I'm I'm sad, I just feel like it gives me a better baseline for for how I actually feel about things. Just mm -hmm. the mental clarity aspect of it, you know. Sure, sure. How do you take criticism? Um, do you ever get trolls online and things like that? 
we, we set up, I, well, yeah, we set up this thing on, on our website for when our new album came out that mm-hmm. people could uh, send us anonymous feedback. I mean, I, I love it. I, I, I don't like it when people have bad things to say, but I think that it, it certainly has, has merit. Mm-hmm. And yeah, I'm a, I'm, I'm a big believer in getting and taking and processing criticism. Mm. I don't get, I don't feel like I get a lot of criticism. I, we get a fair amount of, you know, everybody's got, got some haters, haters out. Sure. Sure. And yeah. usually what they say, I'm like, Oh, I could, I could see where they're coming from. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> okay uh, so you don't really take it to heart though like if someone's like you know outwardly like malicious uh i mean if somebody's outwardly malicious i i can usually write it off to well they're probably going through something on their end that made them lash out in such a way but you know maybe this point of it does have some and they just aggressively stated it sure 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 yeah, I mean, sometimes I just see, you know, people trolling on things. I mean, we were just talking about Jordan Peterson and people are just like kind of attacking him without even knowing what he's talking about, just on mm-hmm. face value based on, um, you know, some like headline that they they read some, you know, some article say, or, you know, some incomplete information from somewhere. And so, you know, they kind of judge the book by its cover. And likewise, that happens in social media a lot. You know, people uh, you know, are quick to say something without any kind of basis. Totally. Um, and on that topic, uh, let's kind of shift to social media a little bit and uh, mm-hmm. more on that side of the, of the game, if you would. Um, where, uh, well, how do you guys tackle your social media? How do you approach that as a band? the what what aspect of it well i mean you guys um all bands at this point you know like part of playing the game of music or a- any kind of uh artwork or anything you you, you sure. have to promote yourself right so um do you guys how do you handle that do you are you always creating content or how do you, how do you go about it yeah so good question i think i understand now mm-hmm. so I, I mean, social media, it's platform platform for expression. Mm-hmm. And we try to be very cognizant of not just being out there using the platform to, to sell things to people. And we try to, we try to keep it very humanistic and artistic and use it. I mean, it's so fun. It's such a fun way to communicate with people. Mm-hmm. And sometimes, sometimes I think other people see it as a, a platform for sales or I don't know. And I just like, I like to have fun with it. You know, we were out this weekend and our bass player, he kept Instagram storying what we, what we were up to. And like my friends all left me at a restaurant and they, he documented them leaving me. And uh, we were just having we were just having fun with it, playing playing songs. I uh, I mean personally, when it comes to social media, at this point in my life, can't tell you how frequently I go to say something, and then I think about is this worth putting? Is this even worth you know putting out into the ether? Mm. No, probably not. Interesting. And then I go go about my day. So okay. So you kind of like, you know, you filter yourself. You're not trying to just like throw anything out there. Yeah, I'm, I'm really trying not to just throw anything out there. Although I know that it's important to, you know, be out there letting people see what you're what you're doing. But I'm 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 happy I'm getting better about not putting so much so much out there, mm-hmm. you know? Yeah. Less, I mean, there's different more. philosophies. Yeah, there are different philosophies like uh there's the um what's his name gary v approach you know gary v i i listened to he was on joe rogan i believe i listened to that episode Mm, yeah i I watch a lot of that um (laughs) so 
uh, yeah, Gary Vaynerchuk is very great at um, marketing and things like that. And he puts up like 85 pieces of content a day. Oh so my God. yeah, and he's like, it's better you just put more and more up because it, it's a, it's about documenting and getting people on this train, basically. Yeah, uh, I just that, put my head down when you said that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Yeah, I mean, but that's that's I mean, like, just he's he has so much energy and he's he's constantly uh, doing that kind of thing, uh, and that's one approach. Um, and, and it's a it's an effective approach. It's kind of like uh, just a machine gun approach. Whereas you're more of a sniper. Yeah, I'm definitely more of a sniper. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You kind of like you know, you plan out a good post and you post limited quality content. You know. That's what that's what I'm trying to trying to do. You know, mm. try to you know talk about our songs and and the why behind things and not just. You know, listen to this. Buy this T-shirt. Right, right, know. right. Well, on that on that front, um, you know, we we can't really make much money selling music anymore. So that's <laughs> you, that, you know, since that's kind of out of question, um, there's other sources that we go to, and of course, social media gives us an access to uh, a bunch of loyal uh, fans and who have high levels of buy-in. And, and so, you know, when we do offer things, um, then, you know, a much higher percentage of them would would buy, you know, compared to, say, um, just an average company or something, just posting something because there's trust and you don't want to betray that trust and you want to offer things of real value, of course. Um, but that said, it's it's that's where the opportunity is for bands nowadays. You know, it's um, we have that access. Uh, and we can create something great for our fans. So, um, what have you guys been uh, making over the past few years? Um, what kind of products or services have you offered besides like just your music online? Yeah, so we made an, a new album called Lion mm -hmm. that came out uh, one year and two days ago. Mm -hmm. And for that, we we did cds and we did vinyl mm -hmm. lots of t-shirts and lots of stuff themed around the album right and then for this for this tour we're going on we did um a t-shirt design by guy steve vance who actually did a couple album covers for the band that we're going on tour with mm -hmm. less than jake so we thought that would be a fun little crossover thing like, hey let's have the guy we've always lo loved his artwork maybe we you know have him do a t-shirt design and so we did that and that that was really fun came out really really cool and it's always fun to work with you know different visual artists i, I absolutely love that aspect of being in a band and i would have never 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 seen that as something that i might love you know getting into all this just all the different collaborations with other kinds of artists right right um and then we did uh we did some guitar picks for this tour mm. Um, we wanted to have some things that we could just give away. So we did guitar picks and pickers and we did, uh, coasters nice. that have, uh, our album cover on one side and then the album cover for our covers EP on the other side. Mm -hmm. And, you know, talking about different ways to, you know, finance things and what uh, we did a, a Kickstarter project, mm. um, that we're still in production of making the thing that we set out to make, which is a, a music special, which is sort of a cross between a band DVD documentary and a live performance video. Wow. So we are on the precipice of finishing that. And we've uh, made a rule for ourselves that we can't do any new music besides one song. We're allowed to do one song because come on, <laughs> we're not, Tyrants. Um, but we're not allowed to do until this music special is done. We're only allowed to do one song. But we've also been doing, you know, it's 2019. We all have our home recording setups and we've been just trying to really crank out the output with songs. So we've been doing these, this covers EP and a couple other things that we have, have in the works. So mm -hmm. it's a, it's a pretty steady stream of, of, of creating. And I just shout out to my 
my wonderful bandmates who, you know, we've, you did the math. We've been a band a long time. Yeah. And this group of guys that we have right now, which has been three of us, it's been me and the bass player for the whole time. Mm-hmm. And then the drummer is in his, this, he, this is his 10th year of mm-hmm. joining the band this year. And then our guitar player, Trevor, has been with us for three years. Okay. And man, it's just the best group. We're so communicative and I, I, I love it. I feel like we're accomplishing so much because just communication is so good. That's great, man. That's great. Uh, but before I move on to uh, like, because uh, because I love to d- discuss the relationships within the, within your band and also in general. Um, I, just to kind of cap off on the um, on, on on more of like the stuff you guys are producing. Your um, do you have any kind of subscription based stuff? Uh, we don't. Um, we've considered it, mm-hmm. but anytime it's come up, you know we're still fulfilling this, the, uh, the Kickstarter project. Got so it. until we check that box, we wouldn't okay. cross that. Path, uh, what but... kind of, uh, levels of like, what do you have at different levels of buy-in, uh, for the Kickstarter? Uh, we did. So it was, it revolved around a live event. We played this show underneath this incredible light installation mm. called the vault, which was made by a local, artist and light designer named ian brill Mm -hmm. and so we sold tickets to the show and then as well as you know there were t-shirts there were some uh did a a seven inch and oh man we had loads of stuff stickers cool like like limited edition things basically right yeah yeah yeah. cool very cool very cool so on relationships you um you you know you've maintained it sounds like great relationships within the band and how have you done that well i don't i don't know if we've if we've done it by any any way of trying it just seems like it's naturally evolved into everybody becoming on the same page and just working well sure. together how, how do you guys resolve conflict uh incessant group texting unfortunately okay <laughs> <laughs> like I definitely have the lowest uh, sure is there a kind of defense rate uh, that's but, funny is there a kind of like um does everyone kind of have an even voice? Is there a kind of more of a hierarchical structure in the band? Yeah, I get. I mean, I guess everybody has their roles, so it, it depends on what what component it is. But I would say, at the end of the day, if we had any kind of rule, it was you know, if you have if there's something you want to do and you can persuade everyone else to do it then we'll do it. Okay. And if you can't, then we'll move on to the next right. thing. You know, so I guess like, you know, most compelling. Okay. Wins. Okay. Okay. So the, if you can make your case, basically, that may, that makes sense. That makes sense. I think dream, yeah. dream theater goes on the, like, if you feel really strongly about using this thing or this idea or whatever, then we'll just give it to you. For sure. Like, you know, when I think about records of ours in the past, there's, you know, every record as far as like input goes are different. And when I, you know, it's not like there was a conversation beforehand where it was like, so-and-so is going to have the most input. It's that so-and-so was the most compelling and more of their input made it onto it, which is fine because it's, you know, where the band is the sum of its parts. Mm. So that's, that's, that's okay. Right. And yeah, I think that's the greatest thing to realize for everybody that like, it's not going to be what any, particular individual in the band wants it to be it's going to be a collection yeah you know so that's that's great that's great so i mean uh so it's, i i I've, i assume that well at least in the current lineup you guys all you know coexist well in the writing process and in other processes too um do you, you guys ever have have to like give each other space or something or on tour um no it's it's not too bad man i feel like the uh amount of time we've put into touring Mm -hmm. i think everyone at this point when we go out on the road we're so so grateful to just have the opportunity to do it and i mean 
touring is it's not very stressful it feels like it feels like i mean we work but uh it feels like feels like vacation and everyone is there and 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 very present it you know a bunch of us have have families or marriages or relationships and on the road you know everybody's there and together and playing hacky sack or backstage Mm -hmm. warm up and it's it's a good time it's a good time for punchline it's exciting i think that hacky sack thing is um it's worth um you know taking special notice of because it's like it's it's a very cool thing to do such like uh an activity with the band and 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 keep that fun thing even besides obviously you play together on stage which is you know the whole point of it and that's the uh that's the peak of the fun um yeah hacky sack is great because it's mm-hmm. it's a it's a team sport you know you're just trying to keep the hacky sack up as long as you can yeah yeah and that's like you know it's a microcosm for the band right <laughs> sure yeah it is it is it's funny <laughs> great so you're married personally right i'm not oh you're not i'm sorry i i uh no it's okay yeah um so yeah i'm just curious what are some important relationships for you uh i'm single at the moment Mm -hmm. and i you know i have my close circle of 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 friends and and family Mm -hmm. and you know the growing up you know, seeing who, you, you you know, time really tells who your, your, your closest people are. Right. And I, you know, I'm more of the mindset of like, have fewer, better friends these days. Mm. Um, but I do love people and I love keeping up with people. And I think I'm pretty good about, you know, keeping in touch with friends and whatnot. And I just got a lot of people in my life that I love and look up to and, you know, try to to not let it get out of hand with keeping up with people. But like I was saying, I talk on the phone a lot and just really like to keep up with friends and keep a um just feel feel that exchange that love with people. I hear that. Um, when you were growing up, um, how was your um, how was your encouragement in going into music or you know pursuing music from like your parents say? My parents are not musical people. Mm -hmm. I don't think they would have ever chosen this for me. But I know that I knew from age six Mm. or so. I mean, I was, I actually, I hadn't thought about it in a long time before this weekend, but somebody asked me. I remember the first, first bands that I heard. So I was born in 1980. And so when I was like five or six or seven, on the radio it was like Def Leppard mm. and Bon Jovi and Bruce Springsteen. And I walk around the house dressed like Bruce Springsteen with a boom box on my shoulder. And it's, I like didn't, I didn't think about that for a long time, but I wanted a guitar when I was seven and my parents, I remember for my birthday, they got me like a toy guitar and I was pissed. <laughs> I was like, I can't do anything with this. This, you know, like it was like you strum the guitar and the amp lights up. And I was like, this is, this isn't, this isn't an instrument. This is a, a, a light show. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so I ended up not getting a guitar until I was teen. And my parents have always been very supportive, but they definitely, there's definitely a struggle for them to, you know, bridge the generational gap in ways of, of thinking and re- with regard to all to all that Mm. and so they've always been very supportive but i don't think it's the life that they they chose for me but we're 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 cool pretty cool about it oh that's good But man it's a it took me you know it wasn't until a year or two ago that i i mean i've always been committed to it but it took a lot of time for me to realize like look pal you're not going to do anything like you, you could not shake it if you tried Right. And just what I'm like, if I boil down all the things you do in a, in a band, I mean, it's really, it's the the songwriting is what I love. And that's just where my head is. That's, that's my sanctuary going into the mind space of thinking about music and songs. And I just love it. And I couldn't shake it if I tried and I'm, I'm, I'm very thankful for it. I feel like it's something that I was, 
born with. So mm. why try to, you know, why try to deny that? Sure. Yeah. So you try I'm to spend your to most time sense into that. Any kind of savant or anything. I'm not, you know, you got to work at it just like anything else, but I got the bug and I got it bad. Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. And, and that's your thing, you know, you just got to stick with it. And, and, uh, it's good. You got some support, even though your parents weren't, uh, necessarily, um, into that. Gung ho. Yeah. They weren't so <laughs> gung ho. Um, <laughs> Uh, my, my father's definitely more supportive. Uh, well, my mother's definitely supportive. She just kind of, she doesn't get it. And she's like, oh, maybe you should go into medicine. Right? <laughs> yeah. Right. So it's, um, you know, that, that is what it is. Um, but, you know, if you, it, it's your thing. It's your thing. It's, you got to do it. It's Hell a, yeah. That's what's meaningful. Hell yeah. Yeah. It sure is. <laughs> uh, do you do other things besides uh music like for work? For, for work yeah yes i have a uh a small marketing company mm. that i run with our uh tour manager and and co-manager we so years ago we did this kickstarter project and the reason we did it is our our good buddy started working at Kickstarter mm. as he was like the Kickstarter Nashville music rep. Mm. I was living in Kickstarter. So his job was basically to go out and, you know, plant the seed with bands and artists that they should run Kickstarter projects. And he was a guy I'd worked with on a couple other different music projects over the years. Like he worked at a, a label that we worked out on the like digital distribution deal for and every time i would work with him i'd always tell myself like i like working with this guy like you should try to work with this guy more and so when he started working at kickstarter you know he said you guys would be so fit to do one of these campaigns and we're like no uh, we don't want to ask people for money da, 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 da. you know uh, that that way of thinking when it comes to crowdfunding which is very common Mm -hmm. and uh but we, you know trusted the guy we gave it a shot and it worked so well for us and i really liked working with him and shortly after we were talking and we had the idea of maybe we could go out and do that for other bands and artists so we we started a small company called craft services mm -hmm. our website is enjoy craft services dot com mm -hmm. and we help people run kickstarter projects and and market do their music marketing and we're not limited just to music you know we've done some other projects for documentaries and coffee shops and but you know it's all, all the same principles mm -hmm. and it's been uh it's been really fun and connected me to a lot of really interesting people that's awesome. Yeah, I'll put that. I'll put those links in the show notes oh, for cool. sure. Yeah. Thanks, man. Yeah, you're welcome. And that, I think that's a very useful thing, actually. Um, I'm, I'm glad I uh, asked you that question. <laughs> cool, cool, man. Cool. Yeah. So, um, one thing that uh, actually just on Jordan Peterson for a second that he talks about, uh, and that actually made me realize um, it's again part of the influence of the show, is um, that creative people um entrepreneurs are the same type of person as um as the artist they're one in the same temperament you know we both have that. that yeah and and so when you realize that it's like you know um if you can get over asking people for money basically the um your creativity can create lots of different ideas for uh, companies, products, services, and then you have an audience. So you have the ingredients at that point. Um, and, uh, and that, you know, that's why I like to ask, you know, like what, what kind of things are, you know, bands are offering or artists are offering to their, to their following, you know, subscription services um, and uh, all kinds of unique limited edition products and, cool stuff I actually I'm wearing a pair of uh, of limited edition Haken pants right so it's just uh, oh, nice. yeah yeah so do you have an ultimate or long term goal for your career <clears throat> I mean 
I do, but I feel like I should define it more mm. in that, you know, I just, my, I, I guess my goal is to stay, stay on this path and keep creating music with the idea that if I can follow what's meaningful, execute these ideas to the best of my ability, that I believe that that will lead me to a you know prosperous career in music which i've only had signs that that's the case on this path so far so which you know helps reinforce the idea but uh, you know it's not like uh, you know try and win a grammy or you know try to sell out a tour they're not so defined in that way mm -hmm. you would define them by what's meaningful to you yes okay so you're yeah. doing a bit with what's and what's meaningful is what's authentic, essentially, right? Right. So I mean, at at the moment, you know, career wise, I'm I do music with punchline, and I have craft services, and the two things, you know, craft services, it, it's the it's something that I would have never thought I would enjoy so much, but I really enjoy working with people, and there's a there's a very human element to it and coaching people to be authentic themselves and, you know, get the point across that, you know, like you were just saying, yes, you're trying to sell the people something, but there's a way to say it that will show them that this is, it's more about the art that you're trying to make and not the money that you're trying to get from them. And right. I get a lot of gratification from, you know, trying to, uh, and, and inspire people to, you know, pursue art, their artistic efforts. Sure, sure. Yeah, and, and that's that's the whole idea, you know. Um, I, I think as artists, if we have any fundamental properties, is perhaps the um, expressing ourselves in such a way that inspires other people to express themselves and, uh, you know, to reach their potential and uh, of their creativity. And I, I think that's why people even essentially listen to music because they, they hear or they see within themselves um, that light and it, it reminds them of who they really are, perhaps. I agree. Yeah. So if, um, if is there anything else we didn't touch on that you'd love to uh, for people to hear? Um, I encourage people to go to so our Punchline's website is punchlion, L-I-O-N, dot com. Mm -hmm. Lion's the name of our newest album. Sure. And if you go to punchlion.com slash days old, there's a calculator that will tell you how many days old you are. And I encourage people to go find out when their next milestone uh, days are coming up. I always point out to people who are under... 20, under 10,000 days, if I can find out that they are, that when their 10,000th day is coming up, because I think people should know when their 10,000th day is. So if you are less than roughly 27 years and 100 days old, you are probably not 10,000 yet, but your day is coming and you should know when it is. So you can celebrate accordingly. Yeah, that's that's actually pretty unique. That's cool. <laughs> <laughs> so that's the that's the only other thing I wanted to touch that, on. That's funny. If you've been granted one message all musicians could hear and remember you by, what would it be? I I think that typically the stuff that I write about, and we we touched a lot of touched on it a lot on this call is you know staying staying positive. And trying to trying to get perspective on the situations that you're in. I mean, I, I feel like all of our songs. It's funny this morning at the gym. One of I was on some playlist, and, and one of our songs came up on the playlist, and I was laughing that I basically write songs as if I'm talking to myself. So when I listen to songs, I was listening to this one song, and I was laughing about like, oh, I'm, I've been making a uh, workout playlist, and I was like, this song. It's like a song I wrote to myself. It would be perfect for this playlist, but people probably think I'm just putting on there for egotistical reasons. But it's like <laughs> the specific motivation there is. I wrote it for, for myself. That's hilarious.
So I, I, you know, uh, ending a point more. I feel like m many of my contributions to our songwriting, I'm trying to talk people down from being anxious or being scared or not believing in themselves. And I think if there's, if there is something that people could take away from, you know, my, my songs and my contributions to our songs, it's that it's just that, you know, don't be scared, keep pushing ahead. You know, you're not, you're not down for the count and you're worth it. I like it. Awesome. Hell yeah, man. Yeah. Thank you for your time, brother. You're welcome, man. And thank you. Thank you for coming on Steve Sobosly, everybody. Um, I'll be hearing from you soon and uh, we're going to do that, uh, sauna session. <laughs> I'm down. <laughs> All right. Cheers, man. <laughs> Cheers, brother. Thanks so much. You're welcome. See you soon.